Hello guys, welcome to 3ds Max news where we cover the news around 3ds Max and we have a lot of things to cover. Let's start by a new fluid solver coming to 3ds Max that is called Final Fluid. It's developed by Sivas Technology and it's on a free public beta so everyone can test it for free. And this thing is really really fast. Final Fluid simulates in real time fire and a smoke and it needs a GPU card. The system works using a sparse voxel grid within an unbound simulation domain. And the system allocates simulation blocks in a dynamic way to use the minimum RAM possible. You can see here some examples from Jignesh Jariwala. And the system runs on real time even on not so powerful GPUs, like on this example by Boban Xnovic. Uh, it's running Final Fluid using a GTX 1650 using 1.5 gigs of RAM and I, it's working as well over time flow and as you can see it's real time it works at 30 frames per second this new solver supports time flow and thinking particles with the ability to read any type of data and also supports force fields all a standard max forces and when you are done you can export your simulation to vdb to be rendered with v-ray arnold or whatever you want it's really interesting it's really fast and it uses very few ram Typeflow Pro was released end of January, I created a special video for it, you can check it out. But during February we got a new floating license option that is ideal for studios. And also in March we got the release 1.004 with a lot of cool new stuff. Birth Surface now has a new option to convert mesh edges into particles. We have a new volume mode inside Tycoon Form. Basically it snaps an object to another mesh but keeping the volume. On a spin we have a new Verlet mode to acquire previous rotation changes. It's possible now to perform tests directly over shape meshes. And my favorite is that now type particle skin modifier can work over type caches because bin information is stored on the cache. Before type particle skin was only working directly with type flow, but now it works as well with type flow caches. Polydesign released VDB Remesh, it's a new multi-thread open VDB remeshing modifier. It's including 10 different filters to be applied on his own mini stack and it costs $49. Fusion is a new parametric modeling plugin by KStudio. You can create all type of arrays in top of a spline, with multiple options to control how the geometry is repeated, the format and fused. The version disponible right now is a pre-release version and it's available for rental starting at $14. Also from KStudio, Studio we have a new version of Project Manager to expand the ability to drag and drop materials, textures and bitmaps into the material editor directly and also you can drag and drop directly into parameter editors. It can speed a lot the process when you are dealing with a lot of materials or maps. And Krakatoa is alive! We didn't had many news from this popular particle renderer and manipulator, but finally Thinkbox decided to add an update to version 2.10.3, giving support to bugs 2021 and 2022, and as well giving support to Thinking Particle 7. Thank you so much, Thinkbox, finally! A little late, but well. Reindeer is a node based render manager for 3ds Max, was used to be commercial, but now they release it for free. You can control any aspect of your render or your 3ds Max scene in another way. And for new scripts we have Building Generator that is a script to create buildings. Created by Milan Safek, we'll use pre-existing components and distribute alo along a splines or using a bounding box. The best of all is that it's free. Constantine Dan has announced Decal Placer 1.5, a tool to place decals on objects. This new version has a new UI, much more modern and fresh, the ability to retain decals aspect ratio, snap angles, resize the decal, real-time projection and way more. Check it out on the website. Also from Constantine we got an update on Form Cutter to version 2.8. This tool assists you in modeling in multiple ways to create different booleans and model, uh, hard modeling in a fast way, but version 2.8 adds as well a cloth panel tool to create cloth in a very simple way. 3ds Max Icon Viewer is a not very usual script by 
can see that Organize and displays all available icons in 3ds Max. It's available for free in GitHub and you can search, edit and save all 3ds Max icons and as a curiosity we can see that the tool found 2098 different icons in Max 2022. Quite a big number of icons. WB Parallax is the package that uses cubic OSL maps to fake interiors over a simple plane and they add uh, three new volumes that are bedrooms, living rooms and kitchens and it's adding 30 new interiors, each one, with night and day versions. They are pretty interesting when you need to create uh, big buildings and you need to do uh, very fast or very memory efficient interiors that will be seen from, from a mid distance. Cine software add a new Max script including a batch processing tool for multiple 3ds Max scenes. Basically you add as many 3ds Max files on the left list and all the scripts you want to execute on the right list. The batch tool will execute these scripts over the Max files that you want, as many as you want and it will do it automatically. The tool comes with more than 16 useful scripts to do all types of operations over your 3ds Max, like cleaning, attaching base by material and things like that and they will be adding more over time and if you have something specific that you will require you can ask for them to be added. If you have max script experience you can write as well your own scripts to run in batch mode and uh, you can check the tutorial for more information. Also from Nagel Han they are collecting a list of all Ukrainian studios and artists with their respective contact forms, websites and what they are working on so people can help them offering more visibility on these difficult times that they are passing and as you can see there is a great talent on Ukrainian doing great artists you can check it out the spreadsheet will be on the links on the description below GDC 2022 will be over at the time I post this video but Autodesk had some cool talks with the studios like Eidos Montreal, NetEase Games, Epic Games, Critica Studios and Platinum Games with talks about USD in-game pipelines, accelerating creative workflows with Epic Games, building flexible modular hero assets in 3ds Max, and so on. Normally after a short amount of time they publish these uh, talks online. And our favorite section, 3ds Max is only for RGB and this month we have a lot of cool things. From Oscar Perez Ayala we have this cool model and motion capture test called Iron Thanos using 3ds Max, Arnold for Render, Substance Painter and others. You can see his Instagram for, for other awesome 3D characters. From Color Sponge Carlos we got these awesome renders from a futuristic Porsche 959 done for his entry for Automotive Challenge in Facebook 2022. The model itself was made by Luis Lara and a lot of kit bash done by Carlos to convert it into a futuristic uh, Porsche. Porsche. He used 3ds Max, rendered in Corona Renderer, Phoenix FD for the smoke and After Effects for the comb. And an awesome render from Vincent Salasombath. It's a Lego recreation from Thunder Joe that is a mechanical animal from the game Horizon Zero Dawn, cool game as well. And the Lego model itself was built by Nicola Stocci. Vincent imported all these pieces from Mechabricks, that is a program to create Legos, into 3ds Max. He sort them out, rig them, and render it with V-Ray 5 GPU. The cool thing is that you can download the instructions to build this model for real. There are the instructions to create this and to order the pieces. I am a huge Lego fan. I am. I have a lot of Legos at home. I was a fan of Lego Technics. Let me know in the comments if there is any other Lego fan here. I will like to know. And check this awesome underwater animation by Christoph Hikak. It's an R&D project to create crowd systems using physics for natural and fluid fish motion. All done with Typhlow. Loving Typhlow. Again, if there is Typhlow fans on the group, please let me know. And he mentioned that more than 10,000 frames were simulated without a single crash. Typhlow, as well on my experience, is super stable. He even shared the 3ds Max file for free on the Typhlow group in Facebook. So if you want to know how he's doing it, you can grab the Typhlow file. I thank you a lot for sharing. And let's go to environments. Stefan Hampel together with Masashi Imagawa created this amazing city environment inspired on Dune. Terrain was done in Gaea and all modeling and scene building in 3ds Max and rendered in V-Ray. Awesome uh, final look. You can see crowds and very detailed. I like it a lot. 
Ara ja veieu Todescas vint totally redesign. You can check a video that I did covering the new redesign. I will have the link around. I don't know if I will be able to do it. And we have this very interesting article inside Aria with Arthur Munoz, that is a French artist, talking about his work on the company Spiders on games like Gridfall and Technomancer. You can see some of his work rigging and animating in 3ds Max for these games and how he solved different challenges. It's very interesting to read the article because he's talking about his experience working in games. And yeah, for the people that says that 3ds Max is only for Archviv, uh, yeah, another example here. And let's finish this section with the awesome trailer that is called Huxley or Huxley, I don't know how to pronounce it. Huxley is the first graphic novel released in an NFT format, being developed as a feature film and TV series. You can see the trailer and the making of to discover how they did it, and you can go as well to the Patreon to get more exclusive content about different aspects of the creation of this huge film. It's been directed by Saba Sivkovic and written and illustrated and co-produced with Ben Mauro. It's a small team of great artists with lots of software involved, all the environments and the structures were completely hand-modeled from scratch in 3ds Max with additional sculpting details done in ZBrush. For a smaller scale detail like junk and debris, they used the kit batch from David Lesperance and Andrew Aberkin, and they scattered around these elements using Forest Pack. We can see on the making of as well that they used Typhlow for some of the effects. As we can see on the article on Behance, the rendering was done with Redshift and it was taking around 2 to 3 minutes per frame using 4 GTX 980 Ti and some of the shots going as long as 7 minutes per frame. But yeah, awesome trailer, the making of it's awesome as well, it's long and they show so many things so fast but it's awesome to see. And yeah, 3 Max being a big part to put all this together and for all the modeling of these things. So as you can see, 3 ds Max used for much more things than even this section is called 3 ds Max is only for art with. But yeah, awesome content this month. And if you like seeing all this stuff, please give a like to this video, take some time to make it. Give a comment, I love comments. Uh, share it with your friends and if you want to help like all these awesome patreons that are helping making me these videos consider entering on my patreon i am sharing different stuff some stuff is exclusive for my patreons i create typhlo tutorials i create uh, different tutorials you can see the videos before everyone else and you help me a ton doing it so thank you a lot guys and see you soon bye